target belly fat. The fastest way to lose belly fat. Five odd foods that could kill abdominal fat. Bit dramatic. But can you actually burn belly fat? Can you target it? One would think that working the abs would have a direct effect on the amount of fat on your abdominal region. It would make sense, right? Apparently not. Multiple studies were carried out, such as a 2007 study led by the University of Connecticut. 104 participants completed a three-month training regime, but there was a catch. Participants were only allowed to exercise one of their arms. MRI assessments of subcutaneous fat before and after the training regime revealed that fat loss tended to be generalized rather than only occurring in the one trained arm. No fat arm, thin arm scenario here. To get to find abs, you need to have a combination of fat loss coupled hand in hand with building enough abdominal muscle to show through skin and the remaining layer of fat. There are multiple ways you can achieve both of these things. If you already have a decent amount of muscle mass, you can aim for fat loss, creating a caloric deficit through exercising and consuming less calories in your food. And most importantly, continuing your weight training regime to preserve the muscle mass you already have. Start with a small deficit, such as 250 calories deficit per day, which would equate to around half a pound fat loss a week. And I recommend tracking your body fat percentage during this process to make sure that you're losing fat and not precious muscle mass. If you are losing fat and not your muscle, then you can up the deficit slightly. But do be warned, the faster you lose weight, the increased risk of you losing muscle mass in the process. So don't rush this. If you are lacking the foundation muscle to do the aforementioned scenario, you have two options. You can up your calories, couple it with hypertrophy and strength training to build muscle, followed by a cut, which is what I was describing earlier. Less calories, lift weights, lose fat, preserve muscle mass. Or you can slowly change your body composition, increasing muscle and decreasing fat through consistent strength and hypertrophy training, coupled with maintenance calories. I personally recommend this method as it's more conducive of building healthy habits for everyday life that are more sustainable for a longer period of time rather than yo-yoing your calories up and down. I also recommend using your body fat percentage as your measurement of choice as you may not see a big difference on the scale. So weighing is not an advisable method of tracking your progress. Before and after photos are also good. If you would like to find out your caloric needs, I put my favorite calculator in the description below. This will give you a decent estimate on where to start. There are a number of factors that influence caloric needs. Height, weight, amount of muscle, activity level, temperature, genetic factors to an extent, illness, gender, stress, but these calculators give you a good basis to start with and you can tweak as necessary. There are other things you can do to increase your rate of building muscle and the rate in which you lose fat. Intermittent fasting, adequate rest, sets and rep ranges during your strength training and adequate micronutrient intake all play a part in how efficiently you get from point A to point B. But those are more topics for more videos. So, to summarize, lose generalized fat all over the body. Gain or preserve muscle mass through strength and hypertrophy training. Calories in versus calories out. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for later videos. Check back tomorrow for day eight of my advent calendar.